Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Aaron Dowd. I'm known around the internet as the podcast dude. And my friend Alex asked me to do a screencast about setting up GarageBand to record a podcast. He has ordered a small USB interface and a couple of microphones, and he's going to have a couple people in the same room recording a podcast. He's never worked with GarageBand before, so he's curious about the process. So I wanted to record this screencast for him, and hopefully you if you're curious about learning this stuff. So I'm going to cover really seven things. I'm going to talk about creating a project. I'm going to talk about creating additional tracks, setting input sources, setting input gain levels, arming your tracks for recording, monitoring your audio, so listening to yourself while you record, starting and stopping recordings. So let's go ahead and jump in. First thing you want to do is find where your GarageBand window is. And when you start up GarageBand, you're probably going to see a window like this. If you're using the most recent version of GarageBand, I am, and I'm also on the most recent version of Logic, excuse me, I am, and I'm also on the most recent version of El Capitan, 10.11.2. So first thing you need to do is make sure that your USB microphone or your audio interface is plugged in and turned on. In this case, I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20, and I've already got it turned on and plugged in. Now, if you hold down Option while you click on this little sound icon here, you can see your computer settings for output and input. So output is where the audio from the computer is going. In this case, I want to send it to my Scarlett interface. And the input is where audio is coming into the computer. So in this case, it's through the USB cable that's hooked up to my Scarlett 18i20. You'll want to set both of these as either your USB microphone or your USB interface. So once you got that done, you can ignore all this stuff about tempo key signatures. That's for music. You're not going to use that. But what you do want to do is make sure your audio input is set to system setting and your audio output is set to system setting. So we're going to choose that, start a new project. Boom, we've got a new project here. You might notice that this is a classic electric piano track. We don't need that. We also don't need this library. So we're going to go ahead and delete that by clicking on it and hitting the delete key. It's going to ask you to create a new track. So what you want to do is select the microphone. Then you're going to select the input, the corresponding input. My microphone is plugged into input one on my interface. So that's the input I want to select. See, my instrument is connected through the interface. I want to hear as I play and record. I want to hear sound from the interface. I'm monitoring myself because my headphones are actually plugged into the interface instead of the computer. And if you have a headphone port on your interface or your USB microphone, I recommend plugging it in there instead of into your headphone port on your computer. All right, so we're ready to create this track. And now we've got a track. I'm going to turn off input monitoring because I am already listening to myself in real time because I have my headphones plugged into the interface. Okay, cool. Now we can rename this. My name is Aaron, so let's do let's do that. <laughs> and let's hide the library by going up to view and hitting hide library cuz I'm not going to use that. Keyboard shortcuts are important. If you're going to be using GarageBand a lot, learn these keyboard shortcuts. Library is Y, Smart Controls is B. You'll need that in a second. Editor is E. Okay, so I already see that I have some input gain levels coming in, but it looks like they're a little hot. I don't want this meter going up to this high yellow. I want it to come in where the loudest parts of my voice are just barely hitting the yellow right about there. So I'm going to turn the input gain level on my interface down for the corresponding track, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. And if you have a gain knob on your USB microphone, this is where you adjust that. So I want to adjust it so that I'm just, when I talk pretty loudly, yeah, right there. That's perfect. And you should know that this little guy right here, this controls what you would hear if you were listening to yourself. But it doesn't affect the recording level of the track. So that's perfect. I'm getting good levels. You'll also want to Turn off the metronome, these little guys right here. Make sure they are not highlighted because you don't need a metronome. And then right click on this track, go to track, header, components, and show record enable. So this little guy right here, click this, and now if you hit record, it is going to record audio on this track. But we need to make a couple more tracks because we have another guest that's in the room. <laughs> not actually, but in real life, if you're recording multiple people, you got to 
you got to create multiple tracks. So we go up here to this plus button, add a new track. Same process. Select the input for that guest. In this case, it'd probably be input two. All the other settings stay the same. And now we've got another track. Going to hit Y to hide that library. It's kind of annoying, right? Don't need to be input monitoring. Do need to be record enable. And I want to make sure that my settings are set up. So something else you need to know, go to smart controls, hit B on this track. And this is where you can adjust the basic plugins that come on every track. What we're actually going to do is go over here to this I, hit that. And now you see you've got some additional controls here. So this is where you could change the input channel for this track. If I switch to this guy, you'll see this is one. This is two. I don't need feedback protection because I'm wearing headphones. You should always be wearing headphones. All right, and so this looks pretty good. I've got my track. I've got my guest track. They've both been had uh, record turned on, record enable turned on. And now when you hit this record button, you'll see some waveforms. If everything's set up correctly, you'll see waveforms for each track. And so that's basically it. One last thing I wanted to mention before I go. I noticed I tested this on my USB microphone that I have. And at first, it wasn't picking up any audio. Even though I had it plugged in, I had the output settings. Let me stop that. I had the output settings set to the USB microphone. And the input right here was the USB microphone. It still was not working. So the way I got around this, I think this is a bug with El Capitan. So the way I got around this was I actually held, held down option, clicked on this, switched to internal speakers, switched back, switched to internal microphone, switched back, and then magically it just started working. I started getting audio levels in here. So try that if you're plugged in a USB microphone and it's not picking up audio. So I hope this was helpful. Once again, that was creating a project, creating additional tracks, setting input sources, setting the input gain levels, arming your tracks for recording, monitoring your audio, starting and stopping recordings. So my name is Aaron Dowd. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent day. If you want to learn more, you can go to thepodcastdude.com or search for The Podcast Dude on YouTube. I've got some other videos about EQ and compression, and I think I'll probably do another screencast about uh, editing tracks in GarageBand, maybe using some of these plugins that you have right here because you got access to some pretty decent plugins here. The ones I use on every track, compressor, EQ, maybe a noise gate, a limiter on the master track, but I'm not going to go into that right now. But they're, they're there. Oh, and turn off master echo and master reverb. You don't need that stuff. Okay, guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you later.